In our last lesson, um, we looked at different types of aid, um, particularly emergency or humanitarian aid, uh, bilateral aid, which is aid um, you know, given from a donor country to a recipient country, and then multilateral aid, um, which is when governments give money to large international organisations like you know, the United Nations or UNICEF, and then those organisations carry out aid activities. We also looked specifically at Australia's aid program and its priority areas and partnerships. Um, and today's lesson, we're going to look at the role of non-government organisations. And the study design specifies that you're thinking about them in relation to health and wellbeing and human development. So we're just going to do a quick recap of these things. It's so important that you um, use these terms properly. These are really key skills for the exam. So if you are relating to health and well-being, you need to be linking to the dimensions and you need to be specific with those links. Okay, so for example, if you were talking about physical health and well-being, you would need to be talking about optimal functioning of body systems or something like that that shows your understanding. If you were talking about emotional health and well-being, you could use terms like, um, you know, being able to display resilience or the ability to express emotions. Um, that should have an N in it for sense. Um, but if you're talking about spiritual health and well-being, you might talk about a sense of belonging or feelings of connection. Okay, so that is health and well-being. Human development you need to be linking to um, the improvement of people's lives through choice and opportunity. Okay, that's a very general term. More specific things that you could talk about within human development are things such as being able to lead a long and healthy life, um, having access to, no to knowledge that expands choices and capabilities, having access to resources for a decent standard of living, um, being able to participate in decisions that affect someone's life. Okay, there are a few examples you could use for human development. So to get started today, I just want you to jump into the Google Doc and I've just given some examples. I want you to say whether that is an example of health and wellbeing, and if so, which dimension does it link to, or whether it more is a statement related to human development. Okay, so this lesson is about non-government organisations or NGOs. These are different to multilateral organisations. They're often still very well known, um, but they're funded quite differently. So these are non, not for profit organisations, meaning you know all of the money that is raised goes either into administrative costs or into running programs, and they are run separate from government. They're often international, so and you will have heard of some of these. They're, they're generally, or very often, they are international organisations that might have branches in lots of different countries, including both donor countries and recipient countries, which makes sense, you know, that you would have an office in a country that might be organising activities, and then obviously offices in countries that are receiving that aid or that support. Um, a really big benefit of non-government organisations is they tend to focus on smaller community-run projects. Um, so they have really strong connections with local communities. If you remember one of the um, you know, disadvantages of things like often bilateral and multilateral aid is that they tend to focus on big urban areas. NGOs often target these rural areas or smaller areas that, that tend to be a bit neglected by multilateral aid. We're going to look at three particular organisations. So we're going to look at World Vision, oh, we've gone in a funny order, um, the Australian Red Cross, which is a branch of the International Red Cross, um, and Oxfam. So I would say you've probably heard of all of these. They tend to have quite a lot of um, marketing and um, you know ads and things like that on TV. So just go in and answer question two, just give an overview of what non-government organisations are, you know, maybe how they're different to multilateral aid. Okay, so World Vision um, is a Christian uh, non-government organisation that was founded in 1950 to help families and orphans in Asia. Now, you, I've never really seen questions that ask you to really know heaps and heaps of things about the history of an organisation. You should more have an idea of what their programs are and, and how they implement them. 
Um, since it was first founded, the, the focus has changed over time from this kind of welfare focus, which is, you know, providing resources, which as we spoke about in the last lesson, doesn't tend to have a long-term impact, now to community development, with the idea being that you empower communities to be able to, um, you know, lift themselves out of disadvantage or poverty. World Vision now works in 67 countries. Um, you've probably heard of things like Sponsor a Child and the 40 Hour Famine. They are examples of programs that are run by World Vision. Um, the, the main priorities for World Vision are kind of three different areas. So in the community development area, they do lots of work around um, decreasing rates of malnutrition and disease, improving access to safe water and sanitation, um, having education and literacy programs. Um, they've got a really big focus on maternal and child health. Um, and they also do things like agriculture programs, which can increase food security and incomes, and then other income gathering, uh, income generating programs. So small businesses and supporting things like that. So these are all focused on helping communities to build their capacity. They also have a humanitarian and emergency relief um, subsection. So obviously that is provided following things like natural disasters or conflicts. Um, so this is more looking at that kind of emergency aid, things like food, shelter, medicine, healthcare. Um, they do have a big focus on children. So they'll, you know, kind of create safe spaces for children that have been displaced. Um, and then also these rebuilding programs to try and help communities um, bouncing back after disasters. Um, their other big area is tackling injustice through policy change, education and advocacy. So even though they are a non-government organisation, they do work with governments and communities to try and help them improve things like policies and education that can have a really, really big impact on development. Okay, so generally that would be done through advocacy or advising or training um, as opposed to going in and creating policies on behalf of a community or a, a government. Okay, so working on this, you know, allows um, communities to try and address these things themselves. An example of a program that World Vision or examples of programs that World Vision run is the 7-Eleven strategy, um, which is a maternal and child health program. Um, and their goal here is to reduce under fiber maternal mortality um, through quite a few interventions. You don't need to know the names of these, um, but seven interventions that focus on mothers and 11 that focus on children. So these are things like improving nutrition, preventing disease, um, improving access to family planning. So being able to choose how many children you have and spacing those children out, um, and then access to maternal health services during pregnancy and during childbirth. Um, and then, yeah, programs for children, so um, promoting breastfeeding, um, helping care for newborns or helping mothers to care for their newborns. Again, nutrition programs, immunisation is a big one, um, and things like malaria prevention in certain places. What I want you to do is jump into question three. There's a video I want you to watch, and then I want you to answer that question. And the question, it's really important, you are talking about how World Vision um, implements programs that can improve health and well-being and human development. Okay, so I've given you this example to help you guide that response, but make sure you maybe give one or two examples of dimensions of health and well-being and one or two examples of how this could improve human development. But the next organisation that we're looking at is the Australian Red Cross. So the Red Cross um, began after World War One as an international organisation, and the, the goal at the time was to provide, um, you know, relief for soldiers and, and people that were affected by World War One around the world. It is now a huge organisation. It operates in 189 countries, so pretty much every country in the world has a has Red Cross presence. Um, so the Australian Red Cross is a branch of that. Um, their kind of mission statement is to improve the lives of vulnerable people in Australia and internationally by mobilising the power of humanity. Um, obviously, that's quite a vague term, um, but they 
they do so much stuff. I, I could, we couldn't possibly talk about every program that is the Australian Red Cross runs. Um, we'll go through an example in a minute. Um, but the principles that, that guide Red Cross, and this is just a good, um, I guess, way to think about non-government organisations, are humanity. So their, their focus is on promoting the dignity of people. Impartiality. So what that means is being a non-discriminatory organisation. They will provide support to anybody that needs it. They are neutral, meaning they have no political ties in any countries. Um, they are independent, meaning that they kind of maintain their autonomy. So because they don't have those political ties, they get to choose how they operate, how they implement programs, things like that. Um, they're grounded in voluntary service. Okay, So obviously there are employees of Red Cross um, you know, at administrative levels and things, but they hugely rely on volunteers that are not motivated by gain. Um, they are universal. So as I said, they operate worldwide in pretty much every single country in the world. And they also have this idea of unity, which is in each country, there is only one Red Cross. That doesn't mean one office, but you know, the Australian Red Cross runs all the programs in Australia, which is a really good way to keep, um, I guess, governance of a program to make sure that there's a, a central organisation of it. Um, a couple of examples of things that Red Cross does, and like we said, there are so many different things. Um, but if we want to, you know, look at the health and well-being level, um, they support communities to identify practical solutions to illnesses and injuries. So some, you know, very different examples are providing first aid training. Um, there's often a lot of doctors that are involved in Red Cross, so they might provide first aid training, which helps communities to um, you know, treat injuries or snake bites or things like that. They've done a lot of work um, preventing the spread of diseases such as Ebola um, in West Africa. And of course, you know, they'd be doing a huge amount of work now um, protecting vulnerable communities from COVID. Um, they do a lot with things like what they call WASH, which is water, sanitation and hygiene, um, but providing these types of facilities and training to villages because you know we know that um, unsafe water and, and sanitation are some of the biggest causes of disease. Um, again, there's a little video I want you to watch um, and then I want you to have a go at question four again, linking health and wellbeing and human development. And the last program we're gonna look at is Oxfam. Again, you've probably seen this logo. It's often, you know, on billboards or on the back of buses or in magazines. Um, it's a big organisation within Australia. Oxfam are secular, which means that they are non-religious. They don't have any religious ties um, and they work in 30 different countries. Oxfam also works with Indigenous communities in Australia, um, as does the Australian Red Cross. So remembering that, you know, some of the communities in Australia have health outcomes as, as low as you know, very low income countries. Um, Oxfam's purpose is really around um, poverty. That is their big focus is to try and reduce poverty and the injustice of poverty. So some of their activities include long-term development projects, which could be health, education, um, income projects, Again, they have a, an emergency or humanitarian section as needed. They do a lot of campaigning. So, you know, you might think that that doesn't make a difference, but absolutely, if more and more people are aware of injustices, people are more likely to either support financially or to take a real interest in, you know, the their politics around um, injustice. And, you know, that might impact how they vote and things like that. Um, Oxfam has a really big role in involving the Australian community. So again, through awareness, through education, through advocacy. So, you know, kind of highlighting to people in Australia about a lot of these injustices that we don't necessarily see. Um, Oxfam run quite a few shops. Um, I highly recommend that there's always some really cool, um, you know, kind of international uh, crafts and arts and things like that in them. Um, but those shops 
earn uh, the money that helps them support their program. So, you know, if you're looking at early Christmas shopping, I highly recommend jumping online to the Oxfam shop and seeing some of the stuff they've got. And they also do things in ethical investment, banking and travel. OK, so again, a lot of people kind of think, well, you know, I don't have that much money to maybe, you know, donate regularly or I don't have the time to volunteer my time. But there are a lot of ways that people can think ethically um, with, you know, the ways that they might invest money, who they bank with. If you're going on a holiday, there are organisations that, you know, give ethical options to do these things. And Oxfam is one that does a lot of work in that area. Um, an example, well, I guess this is kind of a description of what Ox Oxfam does, um, but it's really looking at, like I said, reducing poverty by promoting basic economic rights. That's the main um, thing underpinning all of their work. So some of the things that they do include education programs, um, income generating activities, and small business startup loans. So in the video, you'll see an example of kind of this income generating activity where they've provided support to a family to, to kind of create their own business that will support their family. So I want you to watch that. And then again, final question, question five, looking at the impacts that Oxfam have on health and wellbeing and human development. And in our last lesson, um, the next one, we're going to be looking at the features of effective aid programs. Um, so basically, you know, what are the things that make aid effective for the people that are receiving it?